Hi, I'm Erin Dean. I'm a physical therapist in Austin, Texas. Um, this video is going to be pelvic floor therapy for people after cancer treatment um, who've been put through med medically induced menopause. So there's going to be three sections. The first section will be on bladder anatomy and how to defer your urge or reduce that urgency that's pretty common after menopause. The second one will be on pelvic floor anatomy um, and pelvic pain and kind of how it progresses and we'll discuss a technique to possibly reduce that pain and tenderness. And then the third section will be on the vulvar tissue and um, lubricants and different moisturizers to use for improving that. So let's start with um, bladder anatomy. So we've got our bladder, there's a muscle around it and that muscle, when it squeezes, gives you a sense of urgency. So all of a sudden you have to pee. Um, what happens is with menopause, there are receptors for estrogen on that bladder muscle. And when menopause happens, there's less estrogen in your system. So the receptors aren't getting fed in the same way. And it can cause the muscle to squeeze more often or harder than it used to. So it can give us a symptom called overactive bladder. What you can do is if you're having this, especially if you feel like you have to pee, but then you go pee and there's not a whole lot that comes out. That's a common thing I've heard. Um, you can defer the urge. So it's normal to pee every two to four hours. If you're drinking half your body weight in ounces of water a day. Um, if you're peeing every hour, that's not normal, even if you're drinking a little more water than I'm saying. So what you can do is you have that strong urge, that's the bladder muscle squeezing, okay? You can take a deep breath, calms down the nervous system, and then you squeeze your pelvic floor like you're stopping pee and let it go. Squeeze, let it go five times. That is actually a reflex that makes the bladder muscle stop squeezing for a moment. So that's actually a change in your body reflexively. So you squeeze and relax your pelvic floor five times. Deep breath actually calms down the urge right away. You just have to keep it calm as you calmly walk to the toilet. So that's where you can count down from 100 by sevens. You can think about something pleasant. Most people are having a hard time thinking about pleasant things when they're having this strong urge, especially if you have leakage associated with that urge. So count down from 100 by sevens, walk slowly to the toilet, and don't ever run, okay? I would attempt this and you might notice that it's magical and helps you a lot. If it doesn't, then obviously go check out your local pelvic floor physical therapist and they can give you more specifics for your needs. Um, part two of this video, now we're going to talk about pelvic floor anatomy, pelvic pain, and a technique to decrease that pain and tension. So this is the pelvic floor of a um, person with a vulva, okay? So this is the side view imagine that this person is laying on their back that's their spine they're laying on their back and this is what we see okay so we've got those two sits bones when you're sitting you can rock side to side you can feel those bones on the on the chair this is what you're feeling this is the tailbone back here and this is the pubic bone in the front of your pelvis so the pelvic floor muscles are between those four things just so you can tell it's, you know, this is obviously plastic, but this is, um, let's see, this is the clitoris. We've got the urethra, vagina, and anus, okay? So the pelvic floor muscles, they're, they come in two layers. There's a lot of different muscles associated, but they're two basic layers. The superficial layer and the deeper layer, okay? This is the same on all bodies generally. Obviously, there's different anatomy that come out of these different parts, but we all have the superficial and the deeper layer. So what can happen with pelvic pain is often either there's pain and tension in the superficial layer, and that's often with penetration felt with that initial penetration, it feels like burning or pain. Then sometimes that can progress to pain in the deeper layer, which is here. If you look at it from a side view, 
you can see it's deeper. So if your finger is inside of your own body, the superficial layer is about here, the deeper layer is about that far in. Um, and that deep pain is muscular usually, okay? Um, so how this progresses, especially with medically induced menopause, is all of a sudden you're menopausal, your vulvar tissue changes. So the tissue around the clitoris, the vulva, the labia, internal labia, and then the entrance of the vagina, those tissues become thinner and they can tear more easily, okay? So even with little micro tears, so maybe an itch or maybe with penetration of some sort, they can cause pain, okay? And if you're not used to having that pain, especially if you've just gone through cancer treatment, you did all this, you're finally getting back to intercourse and it hurts, your body then is going to tense up because it's guarding and that's very natural. This is normal and so common, okay? Normal is the wrong word. It's not normal, but it's very common. And it's also normal for you to want to tense up when there's pain, that's what I meant. Um, so what we need to do is we need to heal the tissues and then reduce the tension in the muscles. And that takes time and practice. So what you can do, one of the techniques for reducing the tension in the muscles, and I'll go into how, the heal, how to heal the tissues here in a second, but how to reduce the tension in the muscles is a technique called diaphragmatic breathing, okay? So let's see, you're going to Put your hand on your low belly and one on your chest. If you can lean back in a chair or lay on the floor right now, that's gonna help. It's easier to relax your stomach muscles when, you are, when you're laying down. So diaphragmatic breath is not breathing into your chest, right? In, instead, it's allowing your low belly, let's see if I can scoot back, to, as you inhale, your stomach is relaxed. As you exhale, it moves back in. You can see my chest isn't really moving, right? I'm inhaling, letting my stomach relax. Exhale, comes back to neutral. If you're on at home doing this on your floor, imagine your pelvic floor muscles. So the muscles I just showed you in this, uh, with this uh, model right here, imagine those muscles. You're inhaling, your belly rises. Those muscles drop towards the floor. Or in your case, if you're laying down, they drop towards your feet. Exhale, everything comes back to neutral. So when we breathe in, our diaphragm moves down, belly moves out, pelvic floor moves down. So your diaphragm and your pelvic floor move together. So you inhale, belly moves out, pelvic floor relaxes down towards your feet, exhale, everything comes back to neutral, okay? I'll teach you here in a second how to use that in practice. So the third part, this is the third part, um, on the vulvar tissues. Some of you um, may have talked to your oncologist and are on vaginal estrogen cream. S research shows, current research shows that vaginal estrogen cream is safe for most people with cancer, even estrogen positive cancers. Um, it's shown to have little to no impact of on the estrogen levels in your bloodstream. It stays in the vaginal tissues and the vulvar tissues. And so talk to your oncologist to see if you are a candidate for that. That has made great, great impacts on my patients. Um, if you can't have estrogen cream, I would try some hyaluronic acid based moisturizers like Replens or Reverie. Those are inserted in the vagina before bed. It comes out a little bit as you're sleeping and then you can put some also, if it's a cream, you can put some around the clitoris and the, the internal labia as well. Um, so in addition to that, so that's going to moisturize the tissue and allow your body to hold on to water better. In addition, I would use a um, hybrid lubricant and one that I really like is called Sliquid Organic Silk. It's the green label. Another uh, good product is Oasis Silk, and I'm not getting any money from these companies. These are just um, from experience, hearsay, um, patients' reports, and things like that. 
So these are hybrid-based lubricants. There's a silicone component and a water-based component. Um, the water moisturizes the tissue, the silicone holds it in. And they're safe to use with silicone toys, FYI. Unlike straight silicone lubricants, you cannot use with a silicone toy, all right? So you get your hybrid, hybrid lubricant, take a shower. After your shower, you put a little bit on your finger, put it all around the clitoris and vulva, maybe inside the vagina if you can do that without pain. Daily moisturizing reduces that brittle nature of the vulvar tissue and reduces pain and burning with urination. Okay, so you've got your hyaluronic acid based um, either suppository or cream that go in at night or your estrogen cream that goes in at night. In addition, you've got your hybrid lubricant that you put on daily after a shower. Then that's gonna heal the tissue so that your tissue starts to not be a pain generator. So we're reversing the cycle that we, we, we created with pain. So the tissue is now in a better state. Now you can start using um, a wand. So this is a silicone wand. It's called the pelvic wand. This particular one is um, Intimate, Intimate Rose. It's my favorite. I, again, don't get money from them, but um, it's rigid, but it's soft. And so I would get the vibrating one, which I believe is blue or green. The vibration, when you use it internally, it brings blood flow to the tissue, which, help with all, which also helps healing, okay? So we're going to use this side. This is the vaginal opening, okay? We're gonna insert, move side to side on vibrate, okay? If it hurts, try using that breath technique I taught you to decrease your tension and therefore your pain. All right, we go side to side and then you come up and over, All right? So we're on either side, one or the side. This is the deeper layer of the pelvic floor. You get on that deeper layer, you might have some pain again. It might have burning, it might ache. Um, do your breath, try to soften the muscle underneath that point here. See if you can control your pain. If you start to feel control over your pain, you're going to make changes. Noticing that you don't just naturally, just have pain without um, anything that you can do about it, that's gonna make a big difference probably. Um, another thing you can do with this is you can insert this side deeper into the, vag the vagina and just move it around so you're getting and that's again on vibrate, you're getting all of those vaginal walls with lubricant, by the way, you have lubricant on all of this and on vibrate to heal those tissues. Okay, um, good luck guys. I've seen so many patients in your shoes get better, so many. All right, if you can't get better with these three techniques alone, come see me if you're in Austin. Um, go see your local pelvic floor physical therapist, especially one who has training in cancer rehab, if you can find one. And um, there definitely is hope here. All right, good luck.